G'day, this is Captain Doob, and this is the MAS-38 submachine gun. This particular weapon is of French design and was developed during the World War II era and a little bit beyond. And uh, it comes to you in Fallout 4 in the form of a standalone submachine gun weapon that can be automatic and semi-auto alike and with custom sounds, animations, all injected onto a level list, so you'll find it on bad guys when you kill them, which is great. We'll get right into the attachments now, and we're going to make this one automatic. Now, the best automatic receiver for the 38 specials that we have loaded now is the advanced auto one, which gives us, uh, let's see... 108 damage, which is pretty good, but we can bump that damage up a little bit at the cost of rate of fire for making this thing a uh, 10mm calibre conversion. Let's just go with our advanced auto receiver there. Interestingly, the um, semi-auto one doesn't actually offer that much increase of damage there, so it's kind of like it needs to be in full auto mode, at least if you've got... Um, point spec into commando which we do we'll chuck on a threaded barrel to chuck on muzzle attachments when we get there but we're going to leave the sights on the 100 meter aperture because if you go on the little 200 meter ones the the circle is a whole lot smaller it's a lot harder to see that front post and most of your vision will be blocked so we'll leave that as there not like we're going to be using this thing over at range anyway so that's fine and we'll go for a suppressor you can have an oil filter suppressor which comes from um, pipe guns that looks like it blocks the sight so so i'm gonna put on the 10 millimeter submachine gun it looks like an osprey suppressor maybe that's um deliberately designed like that but it works well for this thing i suppose and you can change the materials of the stock a little bit you can have a sling on it as well which is kind of neat and the magazines you can make that a dual magazine to make yourself reload quicker with uh tacticals patented beige tape which to my mind is a lot more aesthetically pleasing than the blue tape and you can chuck a legendary on it. If I was playing Fallout 76 right now, I'd definitely go for the Furious effect. But we're playing Fallout 4, so yeah, we'll get started on um, some gunners. I'll grab a semi-auto one as well, and two non-suppressed varieties. We are in the killing fields once again, and it feels good to be back in Fallout 4 after playing Fallout 76 for so long. You take shit like this for granted. Anyways... Let's just get started and see how we go, and um, yes, we've got a new A and B today, this one is called Vogue, and I can't see what I'm shooting at. If there wasn't these, um, I don't know, I guess the health bars above them, then I couldn't actually see them at all, that's really weird. We're still in caution, by the way. Yeah, they did, they did nerf sneak like I thought they would in Fallout 76, evidently, but that's okay. We're detected now, and we're doing a shitload of damage, heaps of damage. This thing fires incredibly fast, and it's got barely any recoil to speak of, because we've got it set up that way. So that's pretty good. Getting that extra 25% damage from the suppressor is also helping us too. And we're back in the caution again, ready to sneak attack crit everything. <laughs> this is great. So, as you can tell, this thing has custom animations. You saw the inspection animation before. There's the reload animation. Not the best, but you know what? That's that's fine. They're new animations. The modder didn't half ask the mod to have it um, work with standard vanilla animation. So yeah, something new is always better than just using a vanilla thing. And uh, we'll switch back over to our suppressed automatic one because uh, right now, this is where all the gunners live. So if I could be stealthy here and take them out without much of a hassle, that'd be good. If we do get detected, I'm bringing out the unsuppressed ones because I'd like to showcase the sound of those. Ah, screw it. We'll just bring it out right now. A little bit more on the... Um high recoil side when it comes to the 10 millimeter converter stuff. This one doesn't have a suppressor and they do reduce a little bit of the recoil. But the reload animation is fast enough. It seems to be doing an okay job. I don't expect it to be hitting extremely hard since it's only a submachine gun, so that's fine. You'll notice that the front post on this one is a little bit wider than the rest of them. That's because uh, with that one I didn't have the threaded barrel on. Also, there's Captain Bridget. Let's just get some vats happening. Oh my god, I was actually going into crit spammy Fallout 76 mode there. But no, we got to do things differently. It might take me a while to adjust back. There's a critical. Almost dead. She's going for the um, stim pack. That's okay. Only heals her so much. 
hopefully she doesn't shoot me enough to actually kill me. Health's getting low. Glitching through the door. That's fine. Okay, we're almost done here, so we'll just quickly get the rest of them with my uh, unsuppressed one. This one does have a muzzle break just to reel in that recoil a little bit, and it seems to be working pretty good. We do lose a little bit of range out of it, which is not ideal for submachine guns because generally at range they're weak, so reducing that range even more isn't really all that beneficial, but when it comes to areas like this where close quarters fighting is a thing, that's fine. Also, did you have one too? Yes, you did. So yeah, you'll know when other enemies have this gun because it'll make that distinct sound. And there you go, I just went into <laughs> Fallout 76 crit mode again. Oh, we've just obliterated that guy. I think we've got Nerd Rage happening. Did I mention the ENB before? It's Vogue. Um, someone suggested it to me. It actually looks really good. I think it's going for photorealism, which, I don't know. With uh, Fallout 4's cartoony looking graphics, it's a little bit um, jarring at first, but the lighting is actually really good. We'll just see how it looks when we're out of the um, thing and... I don't know, that looks so much better than what it is vanilla. If I step into some light, hopefully it'll look better. Because I remember commenting on how shit it looks down here in vanilla. But, okay, it still looks bad, but whatever. I actually had to resist the urge to collect these. No, I'm still in Fallout 76 mode. These do not contain lead in Fallout 4. Righto, let's get started on Swan. Now, I've been taking a lot of uh, monsters on in Fallout 76, and none of them really seem to stack up to Swan. Now, this might take a while because we're going to lose our ability to sneak attack crit, and since we're playing Fallout 4 again, we can just stop time by, you know, just going in here and uh, taking all of this, and hopefully not dying due to an overdose of some description. That'll keep our hydration levels up. That's good. Am I going to have to inject all of this shit at once, or what? Okay, there we go. And now we're in danger, so that that was short-lived, but that's okay. We've got a whole bunch of action points now, thanks to everything we've put in our bodies, and that means we can do this. Here comes the hammer. It'll do nothing because we're invincible in bats. That's something you miss. And we've got the mysterious stranger showing up. He's not going to actually do anything because he's not at a health level low enough to make him actually activate just yet. And we're nice and tanky thanks to all of that morphine we put into us. Hello, Mr. Feral Ghoul. That was very rude of you, bastard. Okay, let's just try to get Swan distracted on some trash mobs. There's usually one that spawns out of that crate there. Doesn't seem to be happening. If we can get him wedged in between these two train carriages, that usually makes this fight a little bit easier. There we go. That's the damage we need. I kind of like the HUD elements in Fallout 76 better, because um, you can see how much damage you're doing when you do it, like the health bar. I mean, it doesn't really do anything, but it's just a nice thing to see. If you've seen gameplay, you know what I'm talking about. It makes all the HUD elements in Fallout 4 seem super basic, to be honest. Like, you can notice that the whole um, danger detection meter thing, it's really, really huge compared to what it is. I like the HUD elements in Fallout 76. That's one of the things they did okay, I suppose. I hear a mile lurk. Go away, Mr. Lobster. Actually, you're a good distraction for Swan. And um, the curse of not playing this on a SSD is that, um, yeah, sometimes it stutters a lot when it's trying to load stuff in. My SSD is reserved for Fallout 76, so I get a smooth loading times. Well, sometimes. And then it stutters when I actually load in. It's just not great in general. We're almost dead at this point. We're slipping out of danger, which is okay. We are pushing the weapon to its limits, so, so we can get a general idea of how this thing's gonna go. And we're getting just random crits on him. There we go. That's better. So with all of the Nerd Rage stuff that's happening, there it is now. I just have to activate it by pausing the game. Some of the bullets are getting blocked by this windowsill, I believe. 
Also, it's not helping that he's currently blurred, but he's such a big target anyway that that's not going to matter all that much. And there we go. We've managed to take out Swan with the uh, heaps of chems. So, yeah, if you really want to do shit like this with this weapon, be sure to get yourself jacked up on everything under the sun, I suppose. See, even Swan agrees. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll kill one more thing, and then I think I'll call it a video. Okay, so here we are at night, and I had to turn the adaption off because if I turn it back on, this is what happens. Hang on, let me just pause the game. Yeah, it just, it blooms like that, so, and you can't see anything, so if I turn that off and get rid of this, and then go into crouchy mode, the night vision doesn't seem to blind me, which is pretty good. So that's nice. We'll get started on killing the OG Wendigo here. I was calling him that before Bethesda did their Fallout 76 trailer, so this is the one and only original one. We'll start off with some sneak attack crits. We're still not, haven't come down off all of those chems we've taken before, so that's good. And he's just about dead. Let's just finish him off with the loud and proud ones, shall we? A little bit more recoil on this than I anticipated, but that's okay. We can finish him off nice and fast. A swing and a miss for Mr. Ghoul. He sounded like he was going to make a dive, but he just sort of stumbled forward. And there we go. Looks like we're done with that ghoul and with this weapon. So yeah, it was pretty good. Didn't have the most power to it, wasn't super overpowered, so yeah, it works pretty good. If you got yourself all cammed up, you can have a pretty decent time with this. So, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, check out the description as I do some pest extermination. Let's just throw a crit on this one. You'll notice that the animations, I didn't mention this earlier, but they're um, just basic combat rifle animations in um, third person, which means you do hover hand the barrel a little bit, but at least you're not touching it because the barrel would be bloody hot. Can't believe I'm forgetting the controls of Fallout 4 already. Anyways, so yeah, check out the description. If I remember, I'll throw a description. Oh, that's a cool light show. Yeah, I'll throw a link in the description to the AMB I'm using if you're on PC. It actually looks really good if you turn that adaption off. I'm not sure what that is, but yeah, it looks much better without it. Although the the hills are glowing. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, or I think that's just a visual glitch. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. Thank you for watching, guys.